Welcome everyone. Uh, this is Akash Tarche speaking. <clears throat> so today we will focus on uh, early stage and drug discovery uh, and an application that facilitates uh, designing novel uh, chemical entities. Uh, so the first, uh, I would like to just uh, briefly wrap up the drug discovery cycle uh, you might be uh, aware of. Uh, which starts with analysis of uh, existing data uh, to design novel uh, chemical entities, uh, make them and test them. Since drug discovery is an iterative process of hypothesis construction, relying on observations and validations through triggering new observations, mainly by synthesizing new chemical entities. During the evolution of an idea to reach selection for synthesis decision, an array of computational services are utilized and it's assessed and scrutinized by the project group. Effective coordination of the hypothesis and compound series in projects where multiple groups are collaborating requires access to optimized and dynamically changing information. Accordingly, the major problem of the collection, grouping, management and overview of the relevant information that can be ideas, calculated properties, related data from databases, graphics, comments, or attachments within a single application uh, can be a hassle. <clears throat> so drug discovery uh, is not a cycle uh, that uh, goes back uh, all the time to the very same point. It's more like an evolution, uh, starting from a point, gathering more and more data, so more like a spiral that uh, uh, uses more and more information uh, <clears throat> uh, in, during the next iteration. If we think of a cross-section of a drug discovery pipeline, the situation might look uh, as it is symbolized uh, on this graph. Uh, you have a almost immense chemical space if you think of the virtual libraries that can uh, include billions of compounds uh, for at for one chemotypes that can be even uh, hundreds of thousands, uh, but if you think uh, of the ones that can be synthesized or purchased, uh, the uh, number will drop significantly. And if you consider only those that are close to your idea, uh, you will get a smaller subset that uh, you would like to uh, select and pick, filter into your design set, triage them based on this applied models uh, that you have in-house or what's offered by various vendors and then register them, synthesize them, register them uh, and collect assay data. <clears throat> uh, but you might have uh, additional chemotypes uh, that uh, may also come from this purchasable space or further chemotypes that are running in parallel. <clears throat> Uh, you might also have ideas not originated from this enumerated virtual space, uh, but single entities that are then sprouted uh, into a design set. So now on this graph, you have multiple chemotypes colored on this uh, stacked field chart that are in the design uh, space uh, represented with set of compounds, design sets that you triage uh, based on predicted properties and prioritize them uh, to have a selection for synthesis decision. And that's the point where you uh, make the decision, so where you do the innovation uh, in a way that you judge uh, the compounds that are to be synthesized. After synthesis, all of the fate of the compound is already set. There is no way uh, from that point on to change the chemical or the biological properties uh, of a compound. It's just to be measured. So when you measure, when you observe, you have to refine your hypothesis. You have to utilize the information you collected so far. And those compounds that are under registration or th that are being synthesized uh, will have the similar properties to the ones that you have uh, or might have similar properties in a series that you have already synthesized. So then uh, it means that uh, the observation is to be in a feedback loop channeled 
back to the design space and you have to come up with new ideas, new innovations, new theories. You might uh, change your mind and prioritize an existing design set uh, that, that's already in your <clears throat> pipeline. So the key question is where, where do you store your bright ideas? How can you manage them? Innovation uh, happens typically uh, before the compound is synthesized. When these are on a sheet of paper, in a PowerPoint presentation, uh, or in a file, uh, or uh, in, a, in, a, in a system where all of these uh, ideas are uh, competing with each other for resources to be synthesized. <clears throat> So Marvel Live uh, is an application that covers this space nicely, where you can store your ideas, where you can have access to virtual large libraries to be able to filter out the ones worse to be synthesized, where you can challenge the ideas, run the computational resources uh, to uh, facilitate the decision making process and to be able to uh, focus on those uh, structures uh, that has uh, that have the highest potential uh, to become uh, a drug candidate. So if you think of just a single structure in your brainstorming space, uh, a, a very simple uh, molecule, you might would like to utilize uh, information. So we would like to collect data from databases whether this compound has already been synthesized or you would like to apply your models to have prediction forecasting uh, on the properties or analyze uh, data and uh, use uh, pre-processed data like MMP to be able to uh, uh, predict the, the properties. That's on one hand uh, quite important why you are designing your novel compounds. <clears throat> the other important thing is to be able to uh, register variations while you are drawing, uh, you are applying the models, and if you come up with something important, you would like to save it in a central repository to be able to later on uh, prioritize them, uh, sort them, and uh, make your decision whether a ba basic nitrogen is needed or not, or how the compound should look like. So that's the place where you can uh, balance the attributes and save your ideas so no innovation will get lost uh, at the end <clears throat> and this is how it looks in more life you have a sketcher you have a brainstorming space a workspace where you can freely draw and uh, utilize the calculations real time <clears throat> so that you will get the properties calculated and shown to you and on the other hand you can collect your variations uh, in an idea repository so that you can later on come back and uh, use them as a series of compounds. So some words about the plugin system. All plug plugin system is a service agnostic uh, approach, which means that it can be easily extended uh, with the uh, available computational resources through various integration points that can be a RESTful web service, SQL queries, or common line tools. Camaxon <clears throat> uh, offers are predictive properties, but you can utilize your own models developed in NIME, Pipeline Pilots, or having other vendors providing uh, those uh, calculations for you. <clears throat> the other strength of the plugin system is that it's real time. There is no need to, pu uh, to push a button to calculate the properties just as you draw. Uh, you will get the results, so it won't distract you uh, from, from the ideation. And the third point I would like to mention is that it's dynamic. So you might shift, uh, lift your uh, attention and shift to another property if you see something interesting, so that the right amount of information is needed probably at some stage uh, you are looking for freedom to operate and thereby you are monitoring uh, Sure Campbell or patented compounds database but uh, at another stage you might uh, balance uh, ADME or TOX properties like HERG inhibition 
<clears throat> uh, by uh, utilizing molecular match pairs so that you can easily switch them on and off, uh, change the layout uh, to be able to follow the key uh, attributes while you are designing your novel compounds. And as I mentioned, uh, Marvel Live uh, offers uh, these services uh, and the collection in create modes, which is the design mode uh, where you can apply these calculations. But on top of that, uh, it offers an overview mode. So on the design set, you can uh, utilize all of the collected uh, information and uh, sort based on those, come up with a decision on priority status, or you can assign it to a scientist uh, by providing uh, the chemist name who should uh, take care of that compound or to be able to uh, select subsets uh, of these uh, molecules that can be exported uh, in various report formats so that you can easily create a PowerPoint presentation uh, or uh, you can send selected structures into an ELN system or a compound registration system for uh, starting <clears throat> a virtual registration. So that's the uh, Marvel Live application. And just right now, I, I would like to uh, move to the live demonstration of the tool. <clears throat> when you log in uh, to the system, uh, you will see uh, a so-called launch area where you see uh, your design spaces, design sets uh, organized into projects. <clears throat> and now I will just uh, create a new uh, design set for uh, the amino acid oxidase inhibitors. <clears throat> where I would like to optimize the compounds, come up with new warheads, uh, so, uh, and I would like to utilize uh, X-ray data, so X-ray uh, based optimization. Of the published uh, molecule uh, will be uh, the key uh, or the short description uh, of what I will do. Uh, as you see here, there's an indication that this is a private space. Marvel Live maintains the concept uh, of having a private and a public space where you can uh, work. Private space uh, uh, will not be available for others in the launch, so they will not see. Uh, you can decide when to disclose your ideas uh, uh, to your colleagues and peers. <clears throat> uh, and you can start drafting your uh, design set uh, while working alone. However, there is a way to invite others to your private room, so then they will get access to that space, but it won't be visible for all of uh, the users uh, that has access to the system. So the DMT A cycle starts with, with the analysis of data. So let's focus first on adding some description uh, um, to, uh, to my uh, design set. <clears throat> uh, and I'm just using uh, some published data from J Metcam from 2013, uh, where uh, they uh, have uh, deposited uh, X-ray structures to PDB uh, and uh, uh, also graphically represented uh, the findings. And these will drive uh, my uh, design so that uh, I can I can have uh, a, a capture uh, of uh, of the data available. And I will describe what's the aim of this space. So I would like to optimize what I observed is that uh, FAD. Uh, is uh, parallel to the ligand. And there is an interaction uh, with uh, some arginine, uh, 283, that is to be uh, maintained. Since this is a key interaction, we will see uh, later on <clears throat> 
Uh, this is what we would like to focus on. Uh, and I would like to come up with uh, new warheads uh, and uh, possibly uh, some libraries. So this is the task, this is the challenge I would like to solve uh, uh, in this space. So now I have some understanding on why uh, I would like to design the new compounds. Uh, this layout, what you see, is the create modes of Marvel Live, uh, which is uh, now uh, in the central uh, contains the Marvin JS uh, as the web uh, sketcher component from Chemaxon. And I will just add the uh, reference compound <clears throat> uh, by drawing it. Uh, this is a hydroxypyridazinone uh, structure. Uh, with the uh, hydroxyl on this position <clears throat> and uh, all this will be uh, my reference compound this originates from a uh, fragment based drug discovery uh, as you might know uh, the amino acid oxidase inhibitors one of them is benzoic acid so acidic character is needed but this compound this is a cns related drug development, this compound does not contain uh, acidic moiety. Uh, I will uh, make a snapshot of it. By making a snapshot, you see, uh, you save your structure into uh, the, uh, the set, into the central repository, so it will appear among the variations. So this will be the reference compound from which uh, we know that um, it has some five nanomolar uh, IC50 value uh, and uh, this uh, has already been synthesized. We will utilize this, this warhead, and this appeared in my uh, snapshot list immediately. Uh, there is a way to use this as a reference structure by pinning it. So I will pin this structure, it will appear on the top of the list, and this uh, will be used in the calculations as a reference compound. So that now if I add some properties uh, from the add property dialog, uh, I can uh, set uh, calculated properties <clears throat> at least uh, the current and the pin structure so that whenever I start changing the structure, small indicators will uh, notify me on how these calculated properties uh, has been changed by modifying the structure. Uh, I will also add CNS MPO since as I mentioned, this is a CNS related a uh, drug discovery project where MPO score uh, is uh, indicative uh, for ADMI uh, related properties. <clears throat> and uh, since there is uh, an X-ray information, <clears throat> X-ray data available, I will just uh, add uh, this uh, uh, to uh, through a, a plugin, uh, which is the alignment plugin. Uh, this plugin, <clears throat> Uh, is uh, doing uh, uh, ligand alignment and displaying the aligned idea to that of the co-crystallized ligand within the context of the protein. So it's not a docking algorithm, it's doing a uh, ligand ligand alignment. However, the aligned structures are displayed uh, in the context of the protein structure so that you can visually review uh, uh, how uh, the interactions might be conserved or might changed, uh, might be changed. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see, various five formats are supported. I will use the uh, CIF format uh, from PDB <clears throat> so that uh, you will be able to uh, see uh, the ligand and uh, the design uh, in the context of the protein. Uh, let me just zoom in and uh, locate the, the ligand. So I will click on one of the atoms. Uh, you can even go to full screen uh, if that's needed so that uh, we can uh, zoom into the pocket, uh, you know, uh, have better visual representation <clears throat> uh, of the context. Uh, you see the FAD cofactor in the binding site. Uh, as well as the arginine that's uh, forming uh, the key interaction. Uh, here uh, you can add labels to locate that. Yeah, this is the 283 arginine residue that's forming 
uh, dual uh, edge bones with my ligand. Uh, you can also display or make visible contacts if that's needed. You can see this parallel uh, uh, orientation of the ligand with, uh, with a, a hydrophobic interaction as well. <clears throat> so this uh, showcases uh, the possibilities of Marvel Live to display uh, three-dimensional uh, information uh, in the design space. <clears throat> uh, you can show or uh, switch off the ligands, additives, uh, or even show the protein context uh, in a cartoon-like uh, representation. So now I will I will go back and uh, we will just follow uh, how the interactions are changing here. You can add further properties, and this is the plugin system, what I described as being service agnostic. So uh, you can also utilize external databases like Campbell, so we can check whether activity values are available in public domain in Campbell database. And as you can see, uh, uh, these are the results from, from Campbell. You can just right click and jump directly to the record where uh, this, uh, the compound report card of this specific compound, uh, which will be uh, uh, at the Campbell database site. And you can... <clears throat> uh, utilize further models uh, like MMP or Sure Campbell to be able to see if this specific structure has already been published in patent literature. And as you can see, there is a match. <clears throat> so this has been uh, already uh, covered and there is no freedom to operate probably uh, in this region. Uh, you can uh, adjust the scene as you wish uh, by changing the size uh, of the editor or in the change layout. <clears throat> you can add further columns or uh, reshuffle uh, the plugin system uh, depending on which property you are primarily uh, focusing on. You can add further columns or, or drop them. So now <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned, uh, our goal is to preserve the arginine interaction, so we will use this uh, alignment and start collecting variations uh, for the specific structure <clears throat> uh, and also follow uh, the calculated properties. So let's just start with adding the nitrogen to this position. Uh, and as you can see, it will have some uh, beneficial effect on log P that will be lowered. And this is also uh, a structure with Campbell activity data. That's also my first idea uh, has already been published. Uh, however, the good news is that it's still active on uh, uh, the, the uh, amino acid uh, oxidase uh, uh, enzyme. So this can be uh, uh, warheads one. Uh, but uh, I, I will set the priority to be low since this has already been synthesized. <clears throat> uh, I can even uh, set the status to be uh, synthesized. So now uh, you can you can start <clears throat> designing your uh, additional uh, molecules uh, or additional compounds. Uh, what if we try to uh, design a compound with a five-membered ring. So we will have a smaller warhead. This part of the uh, structure is the warhead. As you can see, still in the alignment that it preserves uh, preserves uh, some of the key interactions. I can zoom in. I can even rotate it here. Probably here uh, the distance will be uh, a bit uh, uh, longer uh, and that might not be preferred. And now we have a, a chiral center in the molecule as well. Uh, but anyways, we can save this uh, as the as our second uh, snapshot. Uh, and uh, we will leave uh, the, the priority as is. Uh, for now, uh, you can get uh, rid of uh, this uh, uh, tertiary structure by uh, introducing further nitrogens so that you can see that we get again some planar structure. Uh, so we ended up with additional uh, warheads <clears throat> or an uh, additional warhead. And if we are going back to reference structure, you can also change this hydroxyl group to an amine group to have the donor here. Uh, and that will lead to further 
<clears throat> chemotypes. You can, as you see, uh, you can monitor if uh, we are in a, a freedom to operate space or not by this Sure Campbell uh, database search where uh, the uh, tool is querying the SureCam database, which is which contains the exemplified structures from all of the patterns done by uh, uh, the Sure Campbell database, uh, and it's refreshed. Uh, it's a 17 million structure collection, but as you see, just as I draw, we get back the results, and it, that's provided by our internal uh, or in-house uh, tools as well. <clears throat> You can think of further modifications on the structure uh, by, let's say, uh, trying to uh, close a ring here at this domain, uh, and you can follow whether it still fits, how uh, the interaction pattern is preserved, and you can uh, keep on uh, having uh, different warheads within the set. So now I have a set of ideas. Uh, however, uh, I would like to sprout them into uh, design sets so that uh, uh, I will uh, do a small scale enumeration. Uh, let's just uh, have some uh, R uh, groups uh, uh, on my canvas. So let's just uh, have uh, an abstract representation. I will have the warhead as R1, linker R2, and the uh, aromatic ring as R3. And um, I had uh, these warheads. I will just uh, uh, redraw a couple of them and indicate the attachment points as well. <clears throat> so uh, that I can uh, start uh, the small scale enumeration immediately. Uh, so let this be this compound. Uh, we can also have uh, this uh, uh, in in our set uh, as well as uh, let's just copy over uh, this here. And we had uh, our idea to have uh, the nitrogen added here. Uh, by preserving this position. As you see, while you have a Marcus structure, all of the plugins are posed since they, uh, they are uh, cannot retrieve uh, values. Uh, I'm just using the smart R group tool to have uh, these uh, R groups uh, noted here. Uh, I will add some linker types uh, to the canvas indicating the attachment points quickly. So since these are linkers, we will need two attachment points uh, to the system. And again, with the smart R group, I can notify that these will be the R2. So as you can see, we have this automatic small scale enumeration. So those structures, or until they can be enumerated, they will appear automatically on the canvas. So the last part should be uh, just adding some examples uh, where uh, I provide uh, this uh, rings, uh, so I will uh, add one uh, attachment point since uh, only one is needed and uh, just uh, have some variations. So I will quickly uh, annotate this as uh, R3. So now we are all set. We can make uh, the visualization a bit better. So I have this abstract uh, molecule. And whenever you click on one of the examples, you can follow how uh, that particular structure will behave in the system so that you can easily check the Sure Campbell analogs, check the alignment immediately, since now we, all, we again have concrete molecules. By clicking on the magnifier, you can follow where these structures are in your Marcus structure. You can snapshot the Marcus as well, to have a, a capture of this, uh, what you have created so far. And you can snapshot all of these so that you can, as you could follow with a couple of clicks, uh, you can uh, uh, enumerate a, a small library uh, of your compounds. So they will appear in my variations list. <clears throat> You can set them back uh, to the editor 
and follow the properties. So that's the point where you have, uh, where you could play with single compounds, but you might would like to have an overview of how they look. And uh, that's, the, that's the overview mode in the tool where we offer uh, calculated properties. So you can add uh, the calculated values uh, where you can uh, set how frequently these are to be recalculated. You can also add uh, the, the Sure Campbell here uh, as, as, a, as a plugin uh, so that uh, you can add the highest similarity values here to easily uh, monitor which compounds are in the domain uh, of patented molecules. And uh, there is a sort and filter option here. So let's say I'm not interested on those that, uh, that are higher than uh, 0.99 uh, similarity uh, to the ones. I also would like to get rid of uh, uh, those uh, where, let's say, uh, we know that the, these are already synthesized <clears throat> and uh, you, you can filter even on molecules uh, as a substructure search. So now uh, we, we did a filtering. Uh, you might would like to sort based on, on log p values as well uh, to see uh, how your compounds uh, are located in this space. Uh, you can add further values like CNSMPO Again, ask for recalculation of the values for those that were not uh, present uh, in the set previously. And you can change in between this uh, grid-like representation and the card view. Now, uh, as you see that some of the compounds uh, shares uh, balanced and uh, optimal attributes, so you can just select them and batch modify the values. So these uh, might have uh, high priority, so the task is, uh, is to assign to chemist or start ordering. Uh, you can add a chemist name and uh, set the status that these are approved for, for synthesis. Uh, and you can uh, <clears throat> switch off your queries, go back to the uh, whole set, uh, select additional molecules, uh, and uh, set the, the priority for those quickly and easily. So these might have medium priority. Uh, you can sort uh, on the priority values to follow uh, your, your structures. <clears throat> we had, uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, there are some with medium, low or high priority. Mm, you, can, you can change again the sorting so you can have subsets of your molecules or visualize them uh, in a card view, uh, card-like representation where small indicator bars will help you uh, to uh, identify the change uh, magnitude. So when this property changes more, you, you, will, uh, you will be able to uh, uh, visually uh, uh, aid uh, the, the cliffs uh, where, uh, where a higher change uh, uh, was uh, uh, is is present uh, in your in your set. So this is uh, how you can triage manage uh, your compound collections, uh, and uh, uh, you can even select uh, some of the structures. And uh, as a final step, uh, uh, let's. Uh, focus on those structures where uh, we set the uh, priority high. So uh, we came to the conclusion that these structures might be worse uh, uh, to be synthesized, be approved, and be assigned it to a given chemist. And now uh, as an endpoint, uh, you can save uh, this set uh, in a report. You can apply the selection uh, from your uh, overview mode. And as I uh, mentioned earlier, there are various uh, export uh, options available, including a PowerPoint presentation uh, where your uh, description and the uploaded images will be shown uh, Microsoft Word. So you can save it to SDF and send it to colleagues. 
uh, or you can save it directly into a compound registration system. So uh, you can just save your molecules and have your PowerPoint presentation. So that was in a nutshell how uh, you can design novel molecules uh, based on the knowledge uh, available for you uh, and utilizing plugins 